Naso Wonder Cooker. Wonders from the Valley of Roses. 1. Naso Wonder Cooker started jumping around the family, rhythmically jingling the bells like in a trance, until he made some space around them. Then, he proceeded to his notorious dance pantomime sketch, his crown act, for the prevention of which Okapini's cooker group had put so much effort a little while ago. Spectators, blessed with imagination, clearly discerned trees, felling, agony. What is he doing? Standing back in the crowd asked. He's depicting a tree, trees, as if in a forest. Those who had the best view of the scene of action announced to the rest. Ha ha, now he's cutting. He's fallen on the ground. Shaking, like playing a wounded beast. Writhing, like a wounded bear. The bear died. Nah, it's not a bear, other viewers objected. The felled tree died. The forest died. Nope, that was the villain who cut down the trees. The cooker defeated him and he collapsed in agony. A bespectacled teen voiced his interpretation. Hey, this isn't Indiana Jones. You clearly overplay video games. The girl next to him snorted. The audience clapped and cheered after each comment. Okapini's cooker group supported the more interesting comments with their bell jingle, at a signal of their leader Styko. After their failure to prevent the Wonder Cookers sketch this time again, the Okapinians had crept through the crowd to watch and wait for their time to intervene. The cacophony was rounded out by drummers and Zurna players scattered around. Some of the people began snickering, pointing at the family that had received Nassau Wonder Cookers special attention. Bonevs, stop cutting down the forest. Otherwise, you see your fate. A beery elderly man shouted. It evoked applause and laughter. Others were outraged. Hey, man, do you really have to snatch at people like that? No tree cut anymore, huh? Cutting is okay, but how much wood do they really need for a household? As for Bonevs, it's their family business. You're not locals, so you don't know it. What a forest have they taken out? And as if never gonna stop. God knows if it's all legal, too. Laws, they're stretchable, you know. What's allowed to one, isn't allowed to another. I see. Well done to the cooker, then. One of the younger Bonevs snorted, while the rest of the family was quietly slipping out of the crowd. Come on, we work, make money and pay our taxes. And those people have come to read us a lesson and judge us. The two little ones, who were sailing away over the crowd, started crying and pointing back to Wonder Cooker. Ah, Wana Mo Kuka. The audience continued the discussion. Okay, you cut, but who will plant? Here are the bald hills, over there. What will we pass on to our children? Let's go back to the caves, huh? To preserve trees and everything, the remaining representative of Bonevs went on with the family image defense. Cameraman, you haven't got my permission to shoot us. If anybody releases this, we'll sue them, remember that very well. And we'll find out who pulled this cooker trick on us. They won't get away with it just like that. People buzzled and argued. Styko and several robust Okapini's cookers approached and surrounded Nasso Wonder Cooker. The wind suddenly rebelled, flinging whatever it found in its path and bending tree crowns like willow sticks. The leaden sky rumbled, lit up with thunder, and rain gushed over the town, like a bucket. The crowd fled, some to their homes, others to nearby buildings or to the parked cars and buses, while avoiding trees and protecting themselves from falling and flying snapped branches. The most curious went to watch, in the storm, how Nassau Wonder Cooker was pushed by cookers onto the bus with Okapini Village sign.